and I, I sort of want to talk. I want to break down the the Gang of Five as well as the White House deal with you to sort of get your take on, on the deal and what it could do to go further. I think you've given us one of those facts is the fact that you know enforcement shouldn't be part of it. Um, but you know, there's a lot of people out there that argue that you know if we're going to allow for all those 11 million on documents to come out the shadow, we have to make sure that we secure our borders, which is sort of part of the comprehensive plan. So the comprehensive plan for those out there listening includes. So more border security, which is part of it. The other part is a pathway to citizenship, allowing for all those 11 million individuals to come out of the shadows um, and actually, you know, go through the process, get a background check, pay penalties and pay taxes, become resident aliens, and they'll be on a pathway to citizenship. Um, it also includes, incorporates the DREAM Act, um, which allows for those individuals who decide to go to university or those who decide to serve our country would be also on a pathway to citizenship. But, uh, but you know, Anna is right that it does provide, it does increase enforcement mechanisms and it does to some extent increase deportations to those individuals who are here who have committed crimes or who are here and, you know, uh, and have done wrong, I guess, to the country. I don't know. However, the yeah. law is written. But what does, what has, they clearly, you know, you, uh, and I heard, I heard it, you know, when you sort of said, Enforcement shouldn't be part of this. So, what would the ideal, what what would the ideal bill look like for you? Yeah. Well, first of all, let's debunk the myth of enforcement. Like at this point, we're spending about eighteen billion dollars a year on enforcement, immigration enforcement, compared to fourteen percent of the rest of our federal enforcement agencies. That includes the FBI and the CIA. And so, to spend eighteen billion dollars, or twenty four percent of our national budget on enforcement, you know that's a pretty large sum. So, do we need more? Do we need to invest fifty percent of our national budget on enforcement when we're cutting programs that benefit the elderly, that benefit working families in our country? You know, we believe that the answer is no. We have enough enforcement. The fact that we have zero migration into the U.S. from Mexico. It's a big sign that, you know, the borders are pretty much secure. You know, at this point, putting more money into smarter enforcement, what's that going to get us? And so um, it's not that we haven't done it. We've done it, and, in, 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 you know, I, I'm, a, I'm against uh, a lot of the spending that we're doing on enforcement. But for those folks who believe in it, we've done it, and we've done it really well. And so for us, uh, a bill needs to start with recognizing that the 11 million people who are here now have been here for 20 plus years, that they are tax paying residents of our communities. You know, regardless, you know, 50% of undocumented people are paying um, U.S. income tax. Um, and everyone who's here is paying local taxes. And so it's not that they're not paying and they're trying to get away with not paying. And so even starting the conversation by saying, who are they? You know, we know that 50% of undocumented people are actually homeowners and are paying home on, you know, tax, taxes to own a home. Um, we know that they're members of families. We know that they're engaged in our communities. And so to start talking of them as if they're this criminal group of people who came over and started taking over, you know, our, our local cities is, is, is just not a good place to start. And we need to start by recognizing who they are and the contributions they make.